Today, I put every player in the NBA in the same draft, meaning that the league as we know it is going to be completely shaken up. The Knicks have the first overall pick and they're gonna draft Joel Embiid. Luka goes two to the Nuggets, Jokic goes third to the Celtics, Giannis is fourth to the Blazers, SGA is a Maverick, Tatum is a Pelican, and KD is a Piston. Now, obviously I could read off all these names, but that would take forever. So what we're gonna do is skip to the end of the draft and we'll get to a roster breakdown where you all can see where every player got drafted. Starting off with the Philadelphia 76ers, they've got Dame, Spicy P, Nikola Vucevic, and Brooke Lopez. Not a bad team, but I'm guessing this team won't be insane. Maybe a play-in type of squad. The Bucks have D Fox, Lori Markinen, and also some good young guys like Amen Thompson and Moses Moody. Steph Curry is in Chicago. The Bulls get their first superstar PG since Derrick Rose. They also have Brad Beal, Rudy Gobert, Cam Johnson, some good pieces on this team, and the Splash Bros are going to remain together. Over in Cleveland, they've got a nice young team. You've got Anthony Edwards, Bam, Jalen Johnson, Trey Murphy III. This team could be a force to be reckoned with a few years from now. The Celtics are led by Nikola Jokic. They've also got Darius Garland. I like that pick and roll. You get OG Ananobi on the team for defense, and you also have Cam Whitmore as a young prospect. The the Clippers have Kyrie and Triple J. The Grizz have B.I. and Evan Mobley. They've also got Zach Levine. And Kaysen Wallace is here. Trey Young still ends up on the Atlanta Hawks. He's going to be playing with Jalen Brown and Austin Reeves. Jimmy is a guy who embodies heat culture, so I guess Miami just had to have him back. They've also got KP and Chris Paul. Charlotte looks pretty good. You've got Tyrese Halliburton, Cat, and then some good young pieces like Keontae George and Bilal Kalabali. Mark Williams is here as well. The Utah Jazz basically basically became the Utah Mavericks, drafting Paolo Boncaro and Franz Wagner. The Kings have AD and D'Lo. These guys are used to running the pick and roll together over in LA. The Big Apple brings back RJ Barrett, but they also add a superstar, Joel Embiid, who they picked first overall. Jalen Brunson is in Los Angeles. Draymond is here as well. Unfortunate he couldn't play with his good buddy LeBron. They've also got Mikhail Bridges. The Magic, they drafted really young. You've got DeMontis Sabonis, who's one of the oldest guys on the team, but they've got LaMelo, Shaden Sharp, Asar Thompson, Trey Jones. Just look at all these good young pieces. The Dallas Mavericks get SGA, Clax, and Brandon Miller. I like that. The Brooklyn Nets went old. They're going to have to try and win this year with Braun and James Harden, but that's a great duo. Luka took Jokic's spot over in Denver. The supporting cast isn't too great, but there are some good young players who could potentially get better. The Pacers actually traded the pick that was Kawhi Leonard on draft night back in 2011, but this time they'll have a chance to make things right with Leonard on their team. JT is on the Pels alongside Desmond Bain. Kevin Durant is in Detroit along Alongside some good defenders, Derek White, Andrew Holiday. PG and Russ are staying together. They're in Toronto. Book is in Houston playing alongside Julius Randle and Jalen Green. Randle's been pretty good in some of the recent videos. San Antonio replaces Wemby with Chet Holmgren. They've also got Scotty Barnes. They definitely tried to draft Young here. Big Z is in Phoenix playing alongside Jamal Murray and Valanchunas. In Oklahoma City, they've got Maxi, Sangoon, and Aaron. Aaron Gordon. This Minnesota team is going to be ridiculous. They have a bunch of the players from the 2023 draft. Wembenyama, Derek Lively, Brandon Pajemski, Scoot Henderson. You've also got other young pieces like Jonathan Kuminga and Tyler Hero. They built a beautiful team around Wembenyama. They could be a dynasty in future seasons. Over in Portland, they've got Giannis and Cash Money Chris, the Portland Bucks. They also managed to get Gigi Jackson. John Morant takes Steph Curry's place in Golden State. And Donovan Mitchell and Cade are the backcourt for the Wizards. You've also got Jabari Smith Jr. and then Yekka Kong. Now that we've checked out all the rosters, let's get into the simulation. And also, if you go on to enjoy the video, I'd really appreciate if you consider subscribing. We're trying to hit 100K by the end of the year. Also, thank you guys so much for 29K. Season is wrapped and Shea Gilgis Alexander won MVP, averaging 36 points, 5 rebounds, and 7 assists. What a season for Shea Gilgis Alexander. 
Usually Luka almost always wins the MVP in year one of the sin. It was a phenomenal rookie year for Wemby over in Minnesota. 23 points, 12 boards, 4 assists, 3 blocks. Nas Reed won 6th man of the year for the Grizzlies. Yeah, he's a great backup big to have on your team. Wemby Nyama also won DPOY and B-Ball Paul won most improved. Jalen Brown was named clutch player of the year and Willie Green was coach of the year for the Pelicans. Here are your all NBA teams. A lot of guys you'd expect on the first team when Binyama did end up making the second team this season just his first year and DeMontis Sabonis usually you don't see him on all NBA in the world of 2k but he ended up making it LeBron is on third team for Brooklyn and then here are your all defensive teams as well checking out the standings for this season the Toronto Raptors were the number one seed in the east are you kidding me I guess the PG and DeJounte duo was really good Russell Westbrook was a nice piece for him but I am surprised they won that many games. At two, you've got the Indiana Pacers. Led by Kawhi Leonard, you've also got Jared Allen, and they were able to do big things. The Cleveland Cavaliers came in third with Ant-Man and Bam Adebayo, and the Atlanta Hawks were fourth with Trey and JB. Out west, your number one team was the Pelicans, led by Jason Tatum. They've also got Mr. Goggles, Bobby Portis. The goggles on in the 2K picture is fire. The Phoenix Suns came in second, led by Zion Williamson. They've also got Jamal Murray. That's a nice duo. I'm surprised they won that many games, though. The Memphis Grizzlies came in third with B.I., Evan Mobley, and Zach Levine, and the Mavs were fourth, led by SGA. Just wait till Brandon Miller starts getting better. Things will really get dangerous over in Dallas. Their team will improve even more. Headed into round number one, we're going to go through things pretty quickly, but if we get any game sevens, I'll be sure to jump in. And it looks like this fantasy draft has really evened the league out because already we have three game sevens we're about to check out. The first one we're going to watch is between Chicago and Atlanta. Steph Curry versus a guy they called the next Steph Curry, Trey Young. And it looks like the Atlanta Hawks, led by Trey Young, will get the best of Curry in convincing fashion. 30 and 14 for Young, 34 from Steph is not going to be enough. We've still got four more game sevens to tune into though. The next one we're checking out is between the Blazers and the Grizzlies. Giannis Antetokounmpo trying to make it into round two. I think that his Blazers team is better than that Memphis team, but we'll see. I mean, the Grizzlies have fought hard to make it to this game seven, but it looks like Giannis will get the win in the biggest game of the series, 31, nine and 11 for Antetokounmpo. Now we've got the Lakers taking on the Mavs. The league MVP SGA could go down in round number one, but the MVP wasn't about to go out like that. He got the win in game seven, 34 and 11 for Shea Gilgis Alexander. Next up, we got the Celtics and the Indiana Pacers. Kawhi versus the Joker. Man, I have to say, Kawhi's supporting cast in Indiana is pretty bad. I think that Jokic definitely has a better supporting cast, but we'll see if he can come out with the win. It looks like the Celtics will get the win. Kawhi, 27, is not going to be enough. The Joker, a monster stat line, 33, 16, and 9. And for our final game seven, we've got Phoenix versus Houston. And this game seven is coming down to the wire. The Phoenix Suns are down by two points here with less than two minutes to go, and Houston has the ball. Book, looking to finish off his former team, goes to the basket and misses the short jumper. It's rebounded by MPJ. Michael Porter Jr. going to dump it down to John Collins. A rare Porter pass. Collins puts up the layup, misses, gets his own board, gives it out to Zion for three, and Zion misses it. Now it's going to go up to Julius Randle. Randle had a clutch time masterclass in a previous video, but he gives it off to Book, Book to the basket, and he gets the jumper to go, giving the Houston Rockets a four-point lead here. They're going to Jamal Murray in the clutch. Murray to the basket. He misses. It's rebounded by Trace Jackson Davis. Now it goes up to Jalen Green. Rockets, with about a minute to go here, could use a bucket. It'd make their lead even more comfortable. And Book's trying to get in his bag and get that for his team. He's going to put up an awkward floater miss. But Jackson Davis gets the board and has a wide open layup opportunity, giving the Rockets a six-point lead. Valanchunas is going to give it into Jamal Murray. Murray defended by Jalen Green here. He's at the top of the key. Now it goes to John Wall. He gives it back to Murray. Nice to see Wall in the league. 
Suns need to score here, but the Rockets are playing elite defense. It goes up to Valanchunas, and he misses the layup. I thought he had Rob Will up in the air, but he couldn't get it to go, and that is going to do it. The Houston Rockets are going to manage a win in Game 7. Devin Booker had a couple big buckets, and overall, it has been a great playoff run for him. 29 points in this one. Now that our first round matchups are wrapped up, we've got all of our round two matchups set, and man, it was a crazy first round. Both the eight seeds beat the number one seeds. Also, the seven seeded Celtics beat the two seeded Pacers. Seven seeded Rockets beat the two seeded Suns. So, this draft has completely evened out the league. The seeding doesn't matter. These squads are all really good. We've got OKC taking on the Dallas Mavericks here in round number two out in the Western Conference. We've also got Portland taking on the Houston Rockets. And then out east, it's going to be Atlanta taking on the Orlando Magic. LaMelo and DeMontis Sabonis looking to make some noise against Trey Young and JB. And then we've also got the Cavs and the Boston Celtics here. This is going to be a tough one for the Cavs. I mean, they've got to face Jokic. But the good news is they have Bam Adebayo to try and slow him down. Out east, things got wrapped up pretty quickly. The Orlando Magic swept the Atlanta Hawks and the Cavs ended up beating the Celtics in five games. But in the West, we've got a close series between Portland and Houston. It's headed to Game 7. This is the second series in a row for both of these teams where they've went to Game 7. And in this one, it's going to be all Houston. The Rockets manage another Game 7 win behind 30 points from Jalen Green, who has been bad in these playoffs. But he stepped it up in a big moment. Book was also really good, 37-10. and 10. And they're moving on to the conference finals. Meanwhile, Dallas and OKC are also going to a Game 7. This might be a record for the amount of Game 7s we've seen in one playoff so far. And we're not even at the finals yet. It looks like this game is like a 90s type of game. It's 91 to 88 with a minute 32 to go. Usually in the world of 2K and in the real life NBA, we see much higher scoring games, but we've got a throwback type of game right here. Tyrese Maxey has the ball for the Oklahoma City Thunder. They're down by three. Maxey gets the screen from Clint Capella. Maxey to the basket, short jumper is good. Tyrese using his speed to find some room and get a bucket. But the league MVP could come right back at the Oklahoma City Thunder, the team he plays for in real life. Shea Gildas Alexander go into the basket. He swings it out to Bogdanovich. Bogdanovich down to Nicholas Claxton. Clax is defended by Sangoon. Not much time left on the shot clock. It's going to go to DiVincenzo who's wide open and he misses it. You can't get much of a better look than that, especially in the clutch of a game. Jalen Suggs gives it to Tyrese Maxey. OKC is now only down by one point. Maxi slides, pulls a three, and misses it. It's rebounded by Dante DiVincenzo, and now DiVincenzo's pushing it up the floor. He swings it to Gilgis Alexander. SGA at the top of the key, setting things up here for the Mavericks. He gets the screen from Clax, drops it down to him. Tough look for Claxton is up, and it's off. It's rebounded by OKC. They're going to give it to Tyrese Maxey. Maxi in need of a bucket here. Maxi going to pull a three and he misses. It's rebounded by the Mavs and Jakob Pertl is going to the line. Jakob Pertl isn't known as a good free throw shooter, but he makes the first one. Second one for Pertl is off and it's rebounded by Sangoon. The Thunder could tie it with a two or go for the win and try and hit a three. Green gonna give it into Tyrese Maxey. Only about five seconds to go. Maxey to the basket. Gonna put up a layup and he misses. A heartbreaker at the buzzer for the Oklahoma City Thunder. That layup rolled out of the basket. Devastating loss for OKC. And the league MVP, SGA, who's been on a tear in these playoffs, is moving on to the conference finals. What a performance for SGA. And next up, the Dallas Mavericks are going to be taking on the Houston Rockets. Book versus Shea. And out east, it's going to be the Cavs taking on the Orlando Magic. And we had two sweeps in the conference finals. SGA wins conference finals MVP for the West. 
Bam wins it for the East. The Mavs swept the Rockets. The Cavs swept the Magic. So we've got a Mavs-Cavs NBA Finals here. Game one of the series goes to the Mavericks. Cavs will win game two. Mavs win game three and four. And the Mavericks will win it in five. Shea averages almost 50 in the finals and 41 for the playoffs overall. Winning an NBA championship. What a monster series it was for Shea Gilgis Alexander, including a 62-point game, a 46-point game to close it out in Game 5. He was on a tear in these playoffs. He couldn't be stopped. And after an exciting playoffs, we've got some big name free agents this summer. We'll see if any of them switch teams. LeBron James returned to the Nets. Paul George is making his way to Milwaukee, leaving the Toronto Raptors. Tyrese Maxey is back in OKC. Siakam went right back to Toronto. James Harden re-signs with the Knicks. I didn't know the Nets traded him during the season. That's crazy. And Claxton returns to the Dallas Mavericks. Let's get into another season. Season number two is wrapped and Shea's run of dominance continues. Another MVP. He upped the points per game, the rebounds, the assist. A crazy year for Shea. Ron Holland wins rookie of the year for the Heat. Markel Fultz, sixth man of the year in Chicago. Wembenyama DPOY and Jarese Walker, most improved player. John Moran wins Clutch Player of the Year for the Golden State Warriors. And Jason Kidd is Coach of the Year. Looks like the Mavs are poised to go out there and repeat. Victor Wembanyama makes All-NBA first team in his second season. 27 and 13. Ridiculous stuff from Wembanyama. And there's 40-year-old LeBron on All-NBA as well. Here's your all-defensive teams. Headed into these playoffs, the Magic were the number one seed in the East with LaMelo and DeMontis Sabonis. You had the Hornets coming in at number two. Tyrese Halliburton and Carl Towns. The Pacers were third. Kawhi Leonard is getting a little bit older. The game at 2K doesn't like him too much. He regresses pretty quickly, but they're still holding strong. And the Cleveland Cavaliers came in fourth with Ant and Bam. They were a good playoff team last year. Out West, the defending champion Mavs were the best team in the league. Brandon Miller got better after the championship and so did Shea. At two you've got the Denver Nuggets led by Luka Doncic. Doncic saw Shea over in Dallas making a ton of noise and now he wants to get involved too. At three you've got the Utah Jazz. Paolo Boncaro started to get a lot better. And then at fourth you've got the Minnesota Timberwolves. They put together a nice team around Wembenyama. Now he's starting to develop and things are all coming together. Again, we're going to go through the first round pretty quickly, but if we get any game seven, so I'll be sure to hop in. And we do have a game seven between Indiana and Atlanta here. Kawhi versus Trey. And it looks like it's going to be the Atlanta Hawks. Trey Young, 35 points. A great first round for Young and he's gonna advance. Next up, we got Orlando versus Washington, a one versus eight matchup here. It'd be a disappointing end to the Orlando Magic season to lose to the eight seed, and this game has been competitive so far, but the Magic run away with it late in the game. LaMelo Ball, 23 and 10. Sabonis, a triple-double with 21 points. And we've got one last game, seven. It's between Denver and Sacramento. Luka versus AD. And this game is coming down to the wire with a minute 10 to go here. The Sacramento Kings are down by four. Ball's gonna go into Doncic. Luka over to Murray. Murray for three and it's good. A beautiful dime from Doncic and Murray knocks down a big shot shot not looking great for Sacramento they're gonna need something quick it goes down to smart and Marcus misses the layup one more bucket for the Nuggets and this one is over with it goes over to Grayson Allen Allen defended by Marcus Smart spins goes to the basket he's trapped he swings it out to Keegan Murray Murray back to Allen Allen with the shot clock winding down needs to make a move he's getting clamped it goes over to Doncic Luka gonna have to pull he shoots right over Porter and knocks it down yeah that's game man Doncic domination in the clutch 37 6 and 8 in this game and the Nuggets are moving on and now all of our round two matchups are set we've got the Nuggets taking on the Pelicans JT versus Luka the Mavs taking on the Timberwolves 
Will Wemby be able to stop Shea? Orlando versus Cleveland. And then we've also got Charlotte versus Atlanta. And in round two, we've got two game sevens. The first one we're checking out is between the Hawks and Hornets. And then we've also got one between the Mavs and the Timberwolves. So the defending champion Mavericks might just lose in round two. But for now, we're tuned into this Hornets versus Hawks game, and it looks like it's going to be Charlotte coming away with a big win here. Carl Towns, 26, Halley at 21 and 14, and they'll move on despite Young's 53. Great effort. He just needed something from somebody else besides Jalen Brown. And now we're here to see if Victor Wembenyama can dethrone the defending champ. And Wembenyama is going to do it. The Timberwolves win by nine points. What a playoff run this has been for Wembenyama. 33, 13, and five with four blocks. Ridiculous stuff from Wemby. And now he's going to have to take down Luka Doncic and the Denver Nuggets. And then out east, we've got Charlotte taking on Cleveland. Halley versus Ant. Two guys who were drafted in the same year, 2020. The Hornets are going to take down the Cavs, so Tyrese gets the best of Ant. And they're moving on to the finals. Meanwhile, out in the Western Conference, we've got a Game 7 between Minnesota and Denver. Will Wembenyama be able to get another Game 7 dub, or is this where his run ends? It looks like Wembenyama is going to do it. A dominant Conference Finals effort, and he is punching his ticket to the NBA Finals. 30 and 17 in this one. Doncic had a triple double. It wasn't enough. And now we get Wemby versus Tyrese here in the NBA Finals. Game one of the series is going to go to the T Wolves. Hornets win game two. T Wolves take game three. And the Hornets win game four. Setting up a big game five with the series all tied up. And it looks like this one is coming down to the wire. With about a minute to go here, we've got a one point game. The Charlotte Hornets have the ball and the lead. Tyrese Halliburton here at the top of the key. One of the best playmakers in the entire league looking to set something up for the Charlotte Hornets. He gets the screen from Williams. Williams rolls and the layup is off. He missed that. Timberwolves will grab the rebound. It's going to go to Pajemski. Now it goes to Hero. Tyler Hero swings it over to Lively. Where is Wembenyama for Minnesota? He has 41, 17, and 11 in this one and is not fouled out. So he'll be checking in soon. In the meantime, the Timberwolves have to hold it down. It's going to go to Hero for a three. Hero misses. It's rebounded by Wendell. Now it goes up to Zaire Williamson. Zaire over to Halley. Halliburton going to the basket. Layup is off. And it's rebounded by Pajemski. T-Wolves still in need of a bucket as they're down by a point. Pajemski over to Tyler Hero. Hero back to Pajemski. He's in the corner. He's going to give it back to Hero. They're playing hot potato with the ball. Now it goes to Jonathan Kuminga. JK over to Hero. Not much time left. Hero steps it back. Mid-range is off. It's rebounded by the Hornets. And now the Timberwolves are going to have to foul. Zaire Williams first foul shot is good. Wemby just checked in. And Zaire shooting his second free throw. Which he's going to miss. Meaning that the Timberwolves are down by two points here. With less than six seconds to go. They've got a chance. Minnesota could win it with a three here. It's going to go into man. Man down to Wemby. Wembenyama, Wemby turns, shoots, and misses. He's going to lose the pivotal game five. A heartbreaker for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Wembenyama did all he could, but it still resulted in a loss. And now the Charlotte Hornets could get the Timberwolves up and out of here in game six. And the Charlotte Hornets will do exactly that. Tyrese Halliburton is an NBA champion. So is Cat. Both these guys had great runs. Wembenyama tried his best, but it wasn't enough. Halley wins finals MVP. Headed into the offseason, here are some of the notable names entering free agency. I'm guessing we'll have quite a few players changing team. Wow, Jason Tatum is making his way to Brooklyn to play for the Nets. D. Mitch stands pat with the Wizards. Jimmy does the same with the Heat. JB stays with the Lakers. Our next big mover is Chris Middleton going to the Cavs, but we didn't see too many crazy moves this summer. Honestly, I expected more. I mean, obviously the Jason Tatum move is huge, so we'll see what the Brooklyn Nets can do. Anyways, let's get into another season. I'm going to call 
call this the last year of the video. Shea Gilgis Alexander, three peats on MVPs. Cooper Flag, Rookie of the Year. Rob Dillingham, six man. Wembenyama, DPOY. And Tijan Salon wins most improved player. Tyrese Maxey, Clutch Player of the Year for the Oklahoma City Thunder. And Steve Clifford was named Coach of the Year over in Charlotte. Here's what your All NBA first team is looking like. A lot of the usual names. Here's your second team, third team, and then your All Defensive squads as well. Now checking out the standings, the Charlotte Hornets were number one. Coming off of the championship season, they were out there hooping. They're looking to repeat. At two, you've got the Orlando Magic. They've been in the mix for these past couple years. The New York Knicks come in third, led by Joel Embiid. They've also got an old James Harden coming off the bench. Over in Atlanta, you've got Trey and JB trying to make some noise. They've been in the playoffs every year. And then at fourth, you've got Trey and JB trying to make some noise. They've been in the playoffs every single year of this video, but I don't think they've made it too, too far. Out west, you've got the Dallas Mavericks coming in at number one. They're looking to win another chip. Luka Doncic and the Denver Nuggets are second. The Houston Rockets are third. Jalen Green is starting to develop and improve his game. The Houston Rockets are third. Jalen Green has gotten a lot better. And the Minnesota Timberwolves are fourth. Wemby's trying to get back to the finals and win it this time. And in round number one of the NBA playoffs, we've got quite a few game sevens that we can check out. The first one we're tuning into is between Milwaukee and New York. Embiid doesn't have a great supporting cast, but he is the best player in this series. The Bucks have some good players though, like D Fox and Paul George. We'll see who comes out on top. It's gonna be Milwaukee winning this one, and Bede can't come up with a big performance in the big game. Not a bad game, but I mean 11 shots in a game seven? Come on now. And for Milwaukee, it's Scoot Henderson leading the way. He was in Minnesota, but I guess they ended up trading him. Also, Amen Thompson had a triple-double. Our next game seven is between Atlanta and Washington. Didn't we just have these two teams face off in a game seven last year? Well, it looks like we've got a close one between the Atlanta Hawks and the Washington Wizards. It is a two-point game here with about a minute 40 to go. Cade is at the line as we hop in. So Cade will expand the Wizards lead to four points. But Atlanta has a very clutch player on their team in Trey Young. Young going to work on Cunningham. Floats one up and is blocked. Now the Wizards give it up to Saar. Saar on the break gets fouled by Young. And Trey Young just fouled out. Alexander Saar misses the first free throw. Second one for Saar is good. So the Hawks are down by five and Trey Young is no longer in the game. Fred Van Vliet Lead has the ball, gets the screen from Austin Reeves, gives it to Reeves, a nice pick and roll between Reeves and Van Vliet. Now the Hawks are within three. Does Mitchell have an answer? He's gonna step it back and knock it down. That was a smooth move. Brown, Jovic, gonna put up the layup and get it to go. The Hawks have a chance here if they can get another stop. Donovan Mitchell gets the screen from Saar. Mitchell driving to the basket, attracts a lot of attention. Saar is open, he misses, Kessler the board, and now the Hawks can tie it up with the three. Van Vliet bringing up the ball. He's defended by Cunningham. Dumps it down to Brown. Jalen Brown fakes. He's going to go up with it and miss. It's rebounded by the Washington Wizards. And Aaron Neesmith is going to the line. First one for Neesmith is good. Second one for Neesmith is off. There might be a sliver of hope here for the Hawks. But they need a bucket. It goes to Reeves for three. And he misses. But it's rebounded. It's going to go out to Brown. And Brown knocks it down. All right. That just made things interesting. Interesting. All of a sudden, Atlanta could send this to OT. I mean, even if Mitchell hits both these free throws, the Hawks could go for three and try and tie this game up. First one for Mitchell is good. Second one for Mitchell is also good. Hawks are going to call timeout with 2.2 seconds to go. Walker Kessler gives it into Jovic. Why is he standing in the mid-range? They didn't even get a shot off. Come on, 2K. The gameplay's got to be better than that. How did he not get a shot off? Jalen Brown, 43 in this one, but it doesn't matter. They end up losing. Cade and D. Mitch were hooping for Washington, and they'll move on. And now out west, we've got one more first-round game seven. It's between Sacramento and Denver. 
I think we had this matchup before last year as well. And it's going to be Sacramento getting the win. Doncic dropped off by Davis. And here are our round two matchups. We've got the Mavs taking on the Golden State Warriors. The San Antonio Spurs taking on the Sacramento Kings. Charlotte taking on Washington. And Orlando versus Milwaukee. Dallas and Golden State are headed to a game seven. Let's get in the simcast. The Warriors have a very high scoring effort to drop off the three-time MVP SGA. 34 for Moran to go along with 15 assists. Also, shout out to Andrew Nemhard, 28 points in 26 minutes. Straight buckets. And now our conference finals are set. We've got San Antonio taking on the Warriors. And we've got the Charlotte Hornets taking on the Milwaukee Bucks. And the Warriors and Spurs are headed to a game seven. Whoever wins will be taking on the Bucks in the NBA final. And San Antonio will get the best of Golden State here, meaning that John Moran and the Warriors just lost. Scotty Barnes leads the way for the Spurs. Chet Holmgren doing his thing as well and they'll be taking on Milwaukee led by D Fog. With all due respect, I don't really think either one of these teams look too crazy. But I mean, hey, they both made it to the finals. Game one of the series goes to the Bucks. Game two will go to San Antonio. Bucks win game three and four, but the Spurs win game five. So we'll see if the Spurs can make it interesting and force a game seven here by winning game six. Then we could see a potential 3-1 comeback. And San Antonio will get the game six win. We're headed to a game seven here. Big performance from Chet in this one and it all comes down to this the Bucks might just blow a three to one never mind the Bucks finish the job in this one the Spurs will lose in the NBA finals that's it for the video have a great day be sure to like and subscribe